Yo, what's up? It's Jason. I am back with another video and another collection update. I think this is officially my second one for 2024. Um, and this is some fresh new stuff and used stuff. As well as today, we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing. I just returned back home. Uh, I've been on the road just off and on all the time. Um, luckily, wherever I go, there's always record stores. So that uh, that does work out. I got a couple of CDs to show as well today. So first of all, kicking things off, we are listening to some Hard Charger. Yeah, I had this record before and then I sold it and then I got it back again. So <laughs> welcome to my life. Welcome to the life of a record collector. It, uh, it happens to all of us. This is volume four, Take the Guff and Suffer. Uh, Hard Charger sound exactly like that name hard charger really because it's just a hard uh, straight ahead punk rock in your face a little bit of crossover with uh, some metal as well uh, these guys are from New Brunswick Canada um, I think out of Fredericton but um, and I had some other I have some other hard charger stuff too I think maybe seven inches um, maybe another record but uh, this is their more recent one I think on a bunch of labels just really good rip roaring um, punk and metal crossover like I said and I got that today along with a couple other things uh, with for a little trade basically I brought in some records just got back brought in some old funk records I didn't want and some other odds and ends and trade in for that and trade in for this one which is the latest album by this artist who I am a total sucker for um, SZA yeah, some uh, Neo Soul, as they call it, or New School R&B, Hip Hop, whatever. Um, this is the SOS album, which I have not really listened to at all, although I think I've probably heard some songs on the radio because it's pretty... She's been getting like bigger and bigger uh, in terms of popularity um, and that sort of pop R&B sound, but don't let that put, it, put you off. I mean, I think... I stand by SZA. I really think she has a lot of talent. I love the voice. love the emo hip-hop. I don't know. Something something just hooked me on this artist since, like, the last album, which was not her debut. I think it was her second album. This is her third. Uh, Controls. Got that record almost kind of by accident. I was going to have it for my shop or whatever. Ended up really digging into it. Of course, she releases videos for every single song on YouTube. So, um, yeah, SZA. S-Z-A. Uh, I stand by it. She, I think she is the next Mary J. Blige or Lauren Hill. Of course, she doesn't sound exactly like them. Um, maybe she sounds a bit more like Brandy in some ways. But she's got a range. And like I said, the songs are really like Earworm. Uh, they are explicit lyrics uh, for sure because it's like 2024 and everything is all out in the open, as you might gather. So that's like an expensive record. This is like a 40, $45 record uh that i got from trading um and i dig it already i haven't even opened it up yet but i was listening to the spotify version of it or whatever uh last thing i got today uh in my trading was a little bit of hair metal glam metal i got this la guns record this is a funny cd it's actually 3d and it actually has little tiny mini 3d glasses that are like a quarter of the size of my glasses right now so i'm not sure who or how you would wear that but uh, Hollywood Vampires, never heard this album before, I'm going to say, straight up, 12 tracks. Uh, it's not their debut, it's like a later one, like their fourth or fifth album, it's from 1991. And uh, I think it's just fun, fun little CD. Uh, I do, I am collecting a fair amount of like sleaze rock, hard rock, glam stuff, so it will go into that section. And um, yeah. It's like a more fun version of Guns N' Roses, if you ask me. Um, now, I've got a couple other things that came in the mail, and then we'll get to the unboxing. Um, this came in the mail, and I have not cracked this open yet. Maybe I'll do it now. This is a really cool split of two killer um, Swedish death metal bands. we got Crawl and we got Feral on this. This is a split CD. Uh, two tracks each, and this is on the Transcending Obscurity label, which is out of India, I believe. Um, certainly the only um, metal label out of India that I am aware of or have in my collection. 
but yeah, no, the packaging on this is amazing alone. Um, I'm going to try to keep this pipe sticker here. Almost like a metallic, shiny metallic uh, emboss, embossed kind of cover here. Really well done. And this shit just rips. I already listened to some of it online, and it's like fucking sick. And yeah, look at this thing here. He has like little stickers going on. I mean, this is it's well done here. What did I pay for this? I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, hand numbered Digipack CD. This is 150 of 300 is my copy. And I got download codes galore here. Wow. And I got a sticker as well on the album cover. So nice, nicely done already. Got the lyrics inside. Got pictures of the bands. So they're both from Sweden. Um, kind of 2000s, 2010s. They've been around. I don't think I have anything from them before, but uh, Feral and Crawl. Yeah, just this thing just friggin' opens up like crazy here. Um, yeah. Pretty ripping death metal, noisy, bolt thrower esque, I would say. Uh, stuff very cool very cool and i got my my hand numbered edition here is there actually a cd in here yeah there is <laughs> there's so much packaging going on here so that's pretty cool and i also got a copy of this uh in the mail which i never had in fact i don't think i've ever listened to this entire album before talking heads naked um really good album actually uh, i've been just rocking it on the stereo today and uh yeah, super fun and funky. This was like the last Talking Heads album that they put out. And I do kind of remember it as a kid. This came out in 88. And I kind of remember it coming out. And I kind of remember thinking, this is not punk. Because uh, I had, I, like to that point, I had kind of a concept of like, you know, this, the Pistols and the Ramones and Blondie, I guess, and Talking Heads, CBGBs kind of Talking Heads. And this is nowhere near a CBGB sound at all. Like this would not, this would never... They, you would never play this live at CBGB's. Um, it's really well produced. It's super David Byrne, a la world music. I would almost say that this is almost this feels almost like an extension of Paul Simon's Graceland album, which probably came out around well a couple of years before this, probably, which I also really enjoy. So, the songs are really good. They're fun, funky, a little bit uh, world beat uh, stuff. There's eleven tracks in total. I, I can't remember what the hit single was i think maybe it was flowers and i feel like some of these songs have cropped up into movies over the time over the years and uh so there's a familiarity with it but fun album so i wouldn't wouldn't mind getting it on vinyl even we'll see for a good price all right speaking of vinyl let's dig in now to the unboxing two boxes waiting for me ah, and i don't know exactly what these are so they are definitely Discogs orders. Um, could they be metal? Could they be techno? Could they be singles? Could they be junk? Anything is possible with this unboxing. This is kind of risk taking here. Let's see if it pays off to do this. Oh yes, this is some cool shit. Okay, it's nothing what I just said. It's actually experimental music. And yeah, I was just talking a little bit about this um, on Stunty's stream the other day. I think I mentioned it, but yeah, I don't know where, where the hell did I hear of this thing. On the VC somewhere. I'm sure I wrote it down somewhere. I'll put it in the notes. Uh, having been built on sand with another base, basis in fact. Uh, this is like a old school, classic German uh, spoken word record, experimental record, uh, which got the reissue treatment uh, in 2022 on Unseen Worlds, uh, structured by Lawrence Wiener and Dickie Landry as the music. And yeah, there is saxophone, bass, clarinet, flute, etc., as well as voices coming and going. Very kind of philosophical, I guess. Uh, kind of surreal. Originally from 68? Is that, is that possible? According to the notes? Um, yeah. So I'm super psyched to throw this on the artist may construct the piece the piece may be fabricated the piece need to be built each being equal and content with the intent of the artist so some avant-garde uh stuff right there 
one record down, one more to go. All right. Not a record I, I've ever seen in a store, but like now I'm trying to remember who showed it on the VC. Was it, um, it wasn't Stunty, although he knew of it, but um, was it the six inch UK guy? I don't, I don't think so, but I feel like there was something he mentioned the other day that got me, got me going off on a tangent. Okay, this one is a super import, it says. I don't know where it's from. Somewhere. Sweden. Somewhere with, like, things in the letters. And uh, if anybody can read this newspaper clipping, then you'll know what country it's also from. Yeah, I'm in Canada, and I don't order anything from the United States. Uh, it's more expensive from the States than it is from the UK or Sweden. I don't really order from Germany anymore, either, because they switched all of their records over to um, couriers like FedEx and UPS who charge ridiculous import fees on top of everything else that you've paid on discards and whatever. Okay, I just got ripped this opens like Christmas now. Yeah, this is the one. This is also some avant-garde shit. And I think, I think it was uh, the, the UK guy that watched sometimes uh, the six inch guy uh roscoe mitchell duets with anthony braxton on sackville this is a canadian label um but it's kind of a rare thing from the 80s and um avant-garde free jazz experimental shit crazy stuff love the photo on the back too and yeah like an og press it's got an hmv price tag on it actually a 4.99 pound so yeah this is gonna be cool Put that on maybe i'll put it on here at the end of this video and uh, i'll see you guys on the next update